find it. Luke 22, and verse 14. Our Lord was about to be crucified the very next day following this event. So he knew better than anyone what was hanging over him. So it says in verse 14, and when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I'll not eat any more, any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I'll not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Again, our Lord was, uh, his ministry was about fulfilled on this earth. He had labored some three and a half years, and now it was his time to come what he had came for, and that was to be the sacrifice for the sins of the world. When John the Baptist says, Behold the King of the Jews, behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. But it was on the occasion of the Feast of the Unleavened Bread, uh, the Passover, and y'all knew where that came from. When God sent Moses down into Egypt, and Pharaoh hardened his heart each time he'd say, I'm going to let the people go. And it came to that final and tenth plague, God said, hey, the death angel is going to pass over Egypt this evening. But all those that are mine go out and apply the door, the blood to the mantle of the doors. And when that death angel that was going to kill the firstborn in every family passed over, then they were not hurt if they had the blood applied. But there went up a howl, the Bible says, in Egypt that morning when uh, they awoke and uh, their loved ones had perished. And they perished because the blood was not applied, or they didn't apply the blood. But our Lord sat down on the occasion. He had told them to remember that Passover and had made it a custom to do that Passover each year. And it was at this occasion when he instituted the Lord's Supper. Um, which began again with the Passover. I was reading a about the Lord's Supper a day or so ago, and I read an article about a missionary lady that was over in uh, Kenya. And while she was there, she observed a little eight-year-old girl. Her name was uh, Monica. And Monica fell into a pit and broke her leg. And the missionary lady uh, climbed in with her and helped her out. And while they were there in that pit, there was a black mamba snake. That's the most poisonous snake, I guess, in the world. It was in that pit with a little girl and uh, this missionary lady. And the black mamba bit both of them. In a little while, the missionary lady was dead. Little Monica survived. The reason being is was the lady 
took all the poison from that initial bite that the black mamba, when it, it bit her, and the little girl, Monica, survived because the lady had taken the poison. And that's kind of a picture uh, of the Passover and, and the Lord's Supper. But in, uh, if you will, we're going to have the Lord's Supper here in just a second. Uh, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want to read that. First Corinthians chapter 11, we'll begin with verse 20. Okay, First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 20. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. One's hungry, and another is drunken. And we talked about this recently on a Wednesday night, how they were abusing the Lord's Supper. And one would have to argue here that they, <laughs> apparently, were, whether they were supposed to or not, they were using leavened wine because some of them were drunk. And the Apostle Paul rebuking them. But he, he said, For in eating everyone taketh before his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God? And shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, which he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And that's what we've got inscribed on this table here. In remembrance of me, as oft as you do it. He didn't say often. And then verse 26 again says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread... And drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. And again, let me emphasize, this is an adverb, meaning how you do it. Because none of us feel worthy, do we? But who does that unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. And he said, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For eateth, eateth, and drinketh unworthily. Eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak, sickly among you, many have sleep or died. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we're chastened of the Lord. And we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for the another. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. That he shall that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest I'll set in order when I come. So this church was a very carnal church, a church in Corinth. And Paul well knew that. But when they told him about what was going on, he said, I partly believe it. <laughs> he knew them pretty well. 